Which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's condition? Aqueductal stenosis, arachnoid granulation obstruction, cerebral edema, dandy walker malformation, or Chiari malformation? A 40-year-old man presents to the clinic with a one-month history of progressive headache, difficulty walking, and urinary incontinence. He also reports difficulty concentrating and memory problems. On physical examination, he has a broad-based gait and an increased muscle tone in his lower extremities. A CT of the brain reveals ventricular megaly without any mass lesions. Okay. Um, what of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's condition? Um... When I see ventricular megaly, I think there is an obstruction. I don't think it's an arachnoid granuli, and I think it's an aqueductal stenosis. Um, at least what I'm first thinking, it's my just gut choice is arachno arachnoid uh, aqueductal uh, stenosis. Um, and so with that, I don't believe it's cerebral edema. I don't believe it's Dandy Walker or Chiari. Um, arachnoid granulation to me would not cause ventricular megaly. It would cause, it would cause like a, to me, I don't think that's what it would, I think it would cause like a, a bigger issue. And so obviously the aqueductal stenosis is, is the, um, it's like, I guess the, the that would be a, constri a constriction of the, I guess the outflow tract from the third to fourth um, ventricles in the brain. And so you would have ventricular megaly. And so again, there's not any lesions either. So I would, I would probably say that. So aqueduct stenosis, yeah? Yes. Okay. So. Um, I think that, um, you know, I think that your, your thought process is pretty good. Um, this one's a little bit of a tough one, right? So cerebral edema, unlikely, right? You're going to see that, um, on a CT scan, right? Your brain is going to be a little bit swollen. Dandy Walker malformation, very specific, right? Chiari malformation, very specific. You can see mm -hmm. that, um, cerebellar tonsil, that's going to be a little bit you know, um, push down. Right. Um, but let's kind of look at kind of the differences here. Right. So arachnoid granulation, I think you mentioned this, right. Um, key thing here is that ventral mega CT without mass lesions are all consistent with normal pressure, hydrocephaly, normal pressure is in pair CSF absorption due to obstructive of arachnoid granulations. Apparently this is more likely in normal pressure hydrocephaly. I think that you get, you actually get to see a narrow cerebral aqueduct. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, usually this is more common in infants and children, not adults. So on a, on a presentation too, but also I think that um, on a CT scan or an MRI, they, if it was, then they would say something like, oh, there's a little bit of a narrowing of the drainage pathway or something like that. Okay. So yes. So, also, I did, I think I've known this, that the, there's a mnemonic that's at least in first aid that goes wet, wobbly and wacky. Yep. And so, yeah, wet urinary incontinence, wobbly, broad based gait, and then wacky is, uh, con I guess, confusion. But I don't know if he has that here, but he has at least two of those three. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess the first thing for a diagnosis standpoint, you got to figure out the diagnosis first on this, I say. Um, I think you, you had kind of an idea, right? You, you knew that he had pressure in the brain, but you have to say to yourself, okay, this is normal pressure hydrocephaly, right? So, um, obviously, they give you the CT to kind of further you know, push that, that there's ventral megaly, meaning that there's just more CSF in the brain. And then the next jump in logic is what is the most common um, pathophysiology to explain normal, uh, normal cephal hydrocephaly, uh, right? So yeah, the, is it the arachnoid granulation. Of yeah, it's going to be kind of the, like the absorption pathway is blocked of some, some kind of issue, right? Either with scarring or whatnot, which is what causes it. That's the most likely here. Okay. But right path, very, very close, 80% there. Like I said, you just kind of put this in your back pocket and be like, okay, so um, you know kind of how the CSF gets reabsorbed and created. So um, that's going to be super, super important. Okay.